Okay, so I'm here with Kayla Solis. Hello, hello. Um, and we just watched Erica Badu's Healer video, the live version. Um, I'm not really sure where it was performed, but it was a live version. Um, so I'm just gonna ask Kayla some questions. We're gonna talk a little bit about her experience and how we feel it was rhetoric. Um, so Kayla, what did you think was the message of her video? Um, well, she spoke about um, hip hop and how it was more important than, or it was a lot bigger than religion, um, as well as the government. And I think what she's saying here is, um, hip hop has a lot to do with the way we carry ourselves, the way that our life is constructed, and you know how we live hip hop through our lives, kind of. Wow, that's actually a great answer. You know, people don't really know, um, you know, how impactful hip hop is, but. Also, people don't know that rhetoric is part of people's lives. So when you talk about black women and rhetoric, they are actually living these experiences. So, you know, some of the things that she was saying about hip hop and it being part of religion and being influential in government mm -hmm. are also that, that she's like living these experiences. Like right. she, she uses hip hop and through that she kind of interacts with the government and interacts with the different religions. And that's also um, part of rhetoric in that rhetoric is meant to bridge some gaps. So black women will come in and they have, you know, a specific audience that they want to reach. And they do that by kind of taking where the audience is and where the audience knows. So like, you know, her audience might know hip hop. And she'll take that and she bridges the gap to, you know, say how hip hop is also related to religion or related to government. Right. So what do you think about that? Um, I think it's interesting. And I think it's, it's a talent because not many people can um, connect two ideas within music. I think our music of this generation has become so, um, so basic, for lack of a better term. Um, and that there isn't any substance and there is no connection between hip hop and the government or politics or anything like that. More or less, it's, um, it's very demeaning to women as well as, um, very, it's, it's all about like making money and things like that. So, um, I think she does a really great job at, um, connecting these two ideas as well as using, I don't know what it's called, but the little thing with the box and she was making beats oh, at the yeah, same the time. Maker, just yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, not many women can do that and still sing at the same time. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of that's, a lot of that's actually rhetoric. So in, you know, rhetorical history of black women's you know, rhetoric, there's a lot of connecting, um, you know, ideas. So when we look at blues women like Bessie Smith and Billie Holiday, which were some of the bases and foundations of Erica Badu's music, actually. Okay. They use blues to connect to um, the newfound freedoms that black women were having because they just got free from slavery. So right. they were able to travel and kind of, you know, forge their own paths. And Bessie Smith and uh, Billie Holiday sang about those experiences and also sang about that experience of being free and the experiences that they weren't necessarily all the way free. So they combined those two aspects in the same way that Erica is combining, you know, the aspects of hip hop with aspects of government oh, and or religion yes. and politics as well. Um, something else that I noticed is that she was naming herself. So in the very beginning of the video, yeah, she, had, as well. she had a lot of names for herself. What, do you remember some of those names? Um... The two that I wrote down was Medulla Abogadam and Cerebellum. And I think um, Erica Badu is such like a, a spiritual person, uh, a woman who's, who's intelligent and capable of, you know, having these deeper inner thoughts and kind of um, delineating what we talk about in class, like so the hegemonic white and, and, things, <laughs> and things like that. Um, but I digress. But I think, you know, talking about the mind and, and kind of relating hip hop and, and government as well as religion. I think she's she's onto something big, and I think that more people should actually listen to Erica Badu because she's actually saying something in her music. Yeah, definitely. That's that's important aspect too because um, as just as you know, we're talking about blues women. There, we're coming from 
a context where black women are being devalued and the fact that she can number one name herself right. and in that space that she's creating between herself and the audience she defines what you can call her and who she is and so those things are important for black women's rhetoric you know black women being able to say who this is who i am mm -hmm. this is who i'm going to be this is who you refer to me as right. and if you do not then you know then this conversation is not going to continue basically right. so those things are like really important also as as, as elements of black women's rhetoric yeah um, um something else i noticed just a little um line of hers she said uh, being baptized in the ocean of poverty, I think along the lines of that, whatever. Um, I thought this was really, really big and really important because within the United States, we have a plethora of homeless people, right? And within other countries or countries that I've been to, I feel like it's, it's more of a sharing, um, mutual experience with homelessness everyone shares but in america no one shares everyone's selfish and we're some of us are born into this poverty you know and i think she's kind of highlighting that and and kind of um making a statement and saying like you know this this has to be changed you know because it happens way too often so I definitely know, I picked up I think that's interesting because um, this song wasn't just about that, but she, you know, she threw that line in there. But she's also talking about religion and government right. and hip hop. So what do those things have to do with poverty? And you know, what does a black woman know about those things? You know what I'm saying? Right. So this is this is all rhetoric because you know we expect um, we expect you know people who are talking and giving speeches to have some kind of history or you know academic knowledge. And you can ask yourself, like, what do black women know about these things? Right. And you can ask yourself, like, what do black women know about religion? And what do black women know about poverty? What research have they done? Yeah, what research have they done? What research have they really done? Can they can they pack back this up with empirical facts, right. you know? But that's not the point. The point is that this is their lived experience. And so their life is an empirical fact. Right. And so that's, you know, how she's embodying these things and she's like living these experiences and then sharing them, building bridges between, you know, her experiences and the audience. So the audience can also relate to those experiences yeah. on that same bridge. So thank you for discussing this with me. Of course. It was great having this conversation. All right.